authenticity has kind of been a watchword with Steve. He, um, you know, he was very keen that Danny would do some weapons training, um, was very keen that Danny would be comfortable with a gun. There is that level of authenticity now, and I think audiences know when a guy knows what he's doing, you know. Um, and that goes back to, you know, the stuff that Michael Mann was doing in things like Heat and bringing in um, ex-Special Forces guys to really show them guys how to do a mag change, how to hold a weapon, and, you know, spending days and days getting that right. So from the get-go, after I sat down with Danny and talked about who this character was and how um, familiar he would be with the tactics that he's got, it became apparent that I needed to get in an ex-SAS guy that I know through a friend and give him a really, you know, good bit of bit, bit of training. Got to be collars up. Collars up, mate, all the time. Collars up, mate. A new Danny, you know, this guy is completely focused and he was so up for this training because he knew that it would take him into the psychology of the character as well and that's immensely important for me to give that to my actors. So we had him doing, you know, speed changes on magazines, doing it the way the guys do it, the way the SAS guys do it. Keep spacing. So if, 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 if a person finds his call, you know, you're not it's thinking. all about clearing rooms as teamwork, putting targets in rooms, picking up rooms, throwing smoke bombs in, and, and, and just, just getting a feel for that sort of environment. For me going in and, 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 and directing the action and, and knowing what I want off the page, I've already sort of started to choreograph certain action set pieces, which is good, so then I can start to talk about um, exactly what Danny's character is going to be doing in, in certain shootouts, in certain set pieces. So we can really train to that. So he's waiting for her to do that, to empty. It's, it's almost like you're listening. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. She's just fucking probably at about nine lines of code. She's just going to empty till it goes. And you're like, oh, I know that's going to happen. And you're just pop, waiting pop, 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 pop. for that sound nice and calm. Those are the little moments that you really need to, and especially with Stephen, he really wanted me to get right. And there's a big shootout at the end of the film where I run into a flat and it's, you know, I've got guns coming at me, but I'm cool, I'm calm, James Bond-esque, you know, I knew I got my change on mag, I hired, I get cover, I reload, boom, I'm ready to go again. Danny, you got them shooting eyes, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need, mate. About two years ago, a young filmmaker called Stephen Reynolds came onto my radar. Um, he'd made a trailer for a proposed feature film called Snowman. The lead character was an albino. And um, I, I, I kind of needed that. I wanted to write a revenge film, but I needed this iconic, very iconic lead character. The lead character was more iconic in the way that a superhero would be iconic so it was almost a superhero movie but grounded in reality in a massive way but it didn't really conform to the things that you need the kind of pattern of the vigilante movie it was a little bit too soft really for me um, i didn't think it was very commercial but i thought wow this guy can really write um, and i used him on a project that didn't get made and then i got him to write my essex boys film the fall of the essex boys and Steve and I had a really, really fantastic relationship. He understands cinema, he's film literate, um, and he really gets action, which is very unusual in this country. Um, so 
we talked about this this snowman project and i just said look I, this isn't for me but let's do a proper old-fashioned you know does what it says on the tin vigilante movie and uh, he came up with the idea of what eventually became vendetta i had always been fascinated with uh, vigilante and and um crime fighting when i was a kid and uh that was that was where it sort of was born from so i really wanted to tell this story about a guy going out and just you know seeking justice in his own way then it occurred to me that it would be a great vehicle for danny dyer um who's an old friend of mine we've done half a dozen pictures together and we steve and i kind of worked on it a bit more and made it into more of a danny vehicle and then we came up with the character of jimmy vickers but in the first couple of drafts it was very like you know snowman but with this SAS operative sort of cutting about instead of an albino but then as we found the identity and we moved towards shooting drafts it became more of um, what Vendetta is now. The hardest thing with these movies is working out the title um, and particularly with a vigilante movie which doesn't have a very specific hook on it you can't call it vigilante so I went through a box of old video games in my loft and found a Commodore 64 cassette called Vendetta and that's where we got the title from.